Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another exciting Swift video on this channel here today. I hope you're having an amazing morning. In today's video, what I would like to do is to discuss a brand new function that was introduced inside of the Swift 5 programming language just recently. And this function is called isMultipleOf. It's actually part of the integer class. And the way I'm going to illustrate how this new function works is to, again, solve the age-old algorithm problem called fizzbuzz. And so with all that being said, let me go ahead and dive straight into the playground on the left side of the screen and minimize myself uh, just a little bit into the corner here. And so I'm going to try to accomplish two things in this video, which is to first solve the fizzbuzz using the isMultipleOf function. And then I'll try to illustrate how to solve this like a pro using a switch statement instead, which is a little bit tricky. I had to dive into the documentation of swift.org to kind of figure this out. So with all that out of the way, let me go ahead and solve this fizzbuzz algorithm by using an array of numbers using this bit of syntax here. So zero all the way up to something like 100 like that. And we're just going to simply execute, you know, a or loop on all these numbers here, hit enter and enter, give your variable a name such as num, num, just like that. Uh, instead of here, you can print out the num. So let's kind of see what this does inside of Playgrounds. Uh, down at the very bottom, we should start seeing all these numbers being printed like so. All right, so zero, one, all the way up to, I guess, a hundred, just like that. Now the fizzbuzz algorithm is to make sure that every time you iterate through an array of numbers like this, if the number is divisible by three, you want to print out fizz. If it's divisible by uh, five, you want to print out buzz. If it's divisible by both three and five, you want to print out fizz buzz. All right, so let me go ahead and implement the logic here by using the percent operator. And this is actually very familiar to a lot of you guys, hopefully. I'm going to say if num is divisible by the value of three, if this is equal to zero, we are going to print out the string of the num right here. And let's see, I'm going to add on the fuzz or fizz at the very end here. Else, if the number is divisible by five, I want to print out, let's see, the very same thing as we did above, but instead we'll just use the uh, characters of buzz like that. Now, if you try to run this, you'll see that uh, you'll only get fizz and buzz and you won't get the actual word of fizz buzz for the division of three and five. And so let me just fix this really quickly here by saying if num is divisible by three and if it's divisible by, let's see, five equals equals zero. And then we'll print out the actual syntax of, let's see, num. And then finally, we'll just say fizz buzz like that. So nothing too fancy here. Uh, let me put an else if just like that. And I'll run this one more time. There's nothing too special about this algorithm or the logic, but it's a very interesting example to kind of go through. Uh, last thing I'd like to do is to just simply print out the number if we don't fall into any of these cases here. So what I mean is we want to simply print out the num like that. And again, this is going to be one final run and you'll see that for the values of zero, this is divisible by three and five. We're going to print out fizz buzz. Three is fizz, five is buzz, and then so on and so forth. So let's kind of check 15 here and you'll get the value of is buzz like so. All right, again, nothing too fancy about the logic here. And with the introduction of this brand new function called is multiple of, you can actually simplify the logic here by applying this function on these number integers. And I will first comment out this guy and try to apply a similar logic, but instead I'll replace the logic here with is multiple. So let's just say if num, I'm going to say is multiple of, this is just a function on any integer. I'm going to use the value of 15 just to make this a little bit simpler. So 15, and then I'm going to use this over here. So I'm going to copy that. And then I do something very similar. If num is, so is multiple of the value of three, we are going to use another else case down here. If num is, so is multiple of five, and then we will finally say else like so. All right, so that's kind of the logic. I'm going to just copy this here. So copy that and copy that and copy this guy one more time. Uh, you'll see that if I run the function now, everything is going to look exactly the same. And you see fizzbuzz here. So 15 is also fizzbuzz and all this checks out pretty normally. 
And you might be asking, what exactly is uh, one of the advantages of using is multiple instead of this little bit of syntax here with uh, percent? So this is called modulus. So num mod three uh, equals equals zero is just pretty much divisible by three. And one of the advantages of using this is you won't run into any of the syntax of, let's say, num divisible by zero. And so let's just try to run this and you'll see that num divisible by zero is not going to work. So let's just say equals zero. Uh, if you try to run this function uh, by hitting the play right here, uh, you'll see that you have a, an actual error. It says that division by zero here and it causes a crash for your program. So using this syntax here, it's a lot easier to avoid this problem. So for example, if you want to truly divide by zero, you can use is multiple of zero like that. I believe this is actually going to work still. So let's try to run this guy and you'll see that uh, your application does not crash and this is an okay thing to do. Okay, so this is how you pretty much apply the is multiple function. And one last thing I would like to do is to solve this problem using a couple of different versions of a switch statement. And again, I think I mentioned this earlier, it took me a while to figure out how to actually do this. So one way of using a switch statement to implement the exact same logic here is to use a multiple value variable instead of a switch statement. And so let me try to illustrate what's going on with a switch statement here. I'm going to use a parentheses like so. And let's say num is multiple of three and comma num is multiple of five. So basically this is very similar to how this is going to work. I'm going to apply a case of let's say true and true. So this means that it's both divisible by uh, three and five. Instead of here, we are going to print out fizzbuzz. So let me just copy this, makes it a lot easier to type out the code. And we're going to apply, let's say true, let's say not true, but true and false like that. Uh, down here, we are going to print out the a value of fizz. So let me copy that. And then finally, we are going to use the case of true, no, not true, but false and true like so, and we hit a colon, and this is the case where it's divisible by five. And hopefully this stuff is making sense for you. Uh, nothing too advanced about this logic here. And finally, for the default case of, you know, not falling into any of these cases here, we're just going to print out the value of num. Uh, finally, we are going to comment out all that code and make sure that this actually works. So let's try to run this. Uh, you'll see that the logic is exactly the same. We get zero for uh, let's see, fizzbuzz for zero, uh, fizz for three, and let's see, 15, fizzbuzz. Okay, so excellent logic here. And I was initially uh, happy with this solution here, but I think I was eating lunch and I kind of thought about this a little bit more and I wasn't so happy about how confusing this syntax here is. So true, 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 false, false, true. Uh, taking a look at it just initially, it is really, really hard to kind of determine what exactly is going on. So a better way of kind of writing this is to use a different style of cases and a switch statement up here. So let me see, what exactly do I want to do? Let me comment this guy out one more time. And so here is the best way of doing this in my opinion. So let's see, I'm going to write a switch statement one more time and it's going to be very similar to what we have down here. But instead of using a multiple of up here, I'm going to apply the actual logic determination inside of this pattern here. And uh, it's very, very difficult to figure out, you know, what exactly you can do in Swift until you see a couple of examples. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say let x, where x is a multiple of the value of, let's say, 15. And then I'm going to print out fizzbuzz. Let me just print out this bad boy here. So copy and paste that in here. Next, I'm going to apply let x where, so let's make sure we have a space there. x is multiple of three. And then I think I want to print out just fizz for three. Uh, case let x where x, so x is multiple of five. We are going to use a colon here, print out the word of buzz, and finally do the same thing down here. So just simply print out the number. All right, so running this one more time, let's just make sure that we can print out the actual numbers down here, confirm that they are indeed correct. So if it's buzz, three is fizz, five is buzz, and check 15. So logic seems to check out. 
But the major difference with the way that this switch statement is written versus this here is that it's very easy to just take a look at this and see exactly what's going on, right? We are performing a switch statement on the actual number instead of our loop iteration, and we're handling the else or the couple of cases of whether or not x is multiple of 15. You can see it's clear as day as to what you're trying to do here. And then you go down, down, you can see everything is just x is multiple of 3, x is multiple of 5. If you wanted to modify the FizzBuzz algorithm to check for something like the multiple of you know, 2 and 7, 8 and 9, you can just dive inside of here and modify these numbers and you don't have to uh, particularly look at what exactly this guy is doing. I find this a little confusing and I feel like this is probably the better way of writing this program. But again, if you don't think that it is, uh, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to apply this brand new function called is multiple of. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's a lot better to use this function instead of the old percentage equals equals logic. Uh, that logic is a lot harder to read, and I really feel like the new additions to the Swift 5 version of this programming language is super duper helpful. Uh, if you want to find out more about Swift programming, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave that down below. Uh, if you want to download the source code for the playground in today's lesson, make sure to find the link in the description as well. That's going to be it for today. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye, guys.